Can Colin Farrell and company wipe your memory of Arnold Schwarzenegger? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of the new Total Recall. Why are you trying to kill me? Your memory was replaced. Your mind was implanted with a life you think you've lived. If I'm not me, then who the hell am I? You don't have the most reliable of memories, do you? When Sony decided to remake Total Recall, they considered three actors, Colin Farrell, Michael Fassbender, and Tom Hardy. Unfortunately for Sony, X-Men First Class and The Dark Knight Rises were barely formed at that point, as were their leads and future stars. So Farrell got the gig, and now it's being predicted that Diary of a Wimpy Kid 3 will possibly outgross Total Recall when they both open this weekend. Hey, Diary of a Wimpy Kid 2 did Best Sucker Punch last year, so it's entirely possible. But if it is possible, why? Why aren't audiences more interested in this Total Recall recall, especially considering the top-notch special effects and world-building showcased in the trailer? Plus, the film is directed by Len Wiseman, who not only dreamed up the four-picture Underworld franchise, but also kept the Die Hard franchise on track five years ago. It might be Farrell's fault, as he hasn't started a hit film since SWAT in 2003. But maybe it's Farrell's co-stars. The Underworld franchise stays afloat because they're so cheap to make, not because they bring in hundreds of millions of dollars. Plus, Wiseman's wife hasn't had a movie past the century mark since she played Adam Sandler's wife in Click. This Total Recall is not cheap to make, by the way. Its budget is rumored to be around $200 million before advertising. Who spends $200 million on a movie starring three actors who continuously don't deliver at the box office? Yes, Jessica Biel can also thank Adam Sandler for the last time she started in a movie that passed the century mark. I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. But alas, Hollywood often confuses an actor's ability to sell tabloid magazines with their ability to sell movie tickets, thus Angelina Jolie's continued career. Then there's always a the theory that audiences are still loyal to the original Total Recall. Released in 1990, the sci-fi actioner featured city-of-the-art special effects for the times and is one of Schwarzenegger's best films. In fact, it's now available on Blu-ray and holds up surprisingly well. I'd also like to point out that you can find the DVD commentary right here on YouTube, where Schwarzenegger hilariously thinks he's supposed to just describe what's happening in the movie instead of give you behind-the-scenes anecdotes. You really should check out the original Total Recall, and don't worry. In this remake, they don't even go to Mars and are anti-political rather than anti-corporate. So if they are indeed different, can two Total Recalls coexist? Let's go find out. Was it a good idea to remake Total Recall? Uh, definitely no. It oh, was no? Not. Actually, I enjoyed the movie, but in all honesty, I preferred the original better. I think it was a good idea to, uh, to try to uh, reinterpret uh, Philip K. Dick's original short story. Is that what they did here? Um, not successfully, in oh. my opinion. I liked it. You liked it? Uh, yeah, 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 I liked it. What did you, so what did you like about it? Defend Total Recall. Okay, um... It's the closest look to Blade Runner I've seen since Blade Runner, and, and I loved Blade Runner. The movie, action-wise, was great, but it did to me, the plot and the character development was really, I'd say, half-assed. In the trailer, it looks like it has amazing world-building. Does the film capitalize on that at all? I, I think that actually might be one of the best parts of the film, yeah. actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. But they used... It too much in the movie where the storytelling is a bit overlapped by the effects. It was like a huge gimmick. It was like a Michael Bay film. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Okay. It was no. just a bunch of explosions. The story at first was actually kind of interesting, but then mm -hmm. it didn't stay on the same track. For most of the movie, it's one long chase, which, oh. which, which really keeps you interested in it. Mm -hmm. Now, films are more about the special effects than the. Um, the, the actual characters, yeah. and I, also I didn't like the fact that it wasn't rated R, because I, I feel like it took something out of the movie just not being rated R. Because the first one was super violent. Yes, and yeah. I, I feel like that took away from it, actually. I haven't seen the first one. Oh, yeah. oh a fresh mind, <laughs> yeah. a fresh yeah. mind. How, how was this? Yeah, uh, it was good. Uh, it was uh, better than most of the sci-fi movies that I've seen recently, uh -huh. but uh, to be very frank, uh, Again, it seemed like, you know, everything was just a bit too artificial. Where did it fail? Was it like the screenplay, the directing, the acting? Uh, those things all, those things all failed in, in my opinion. And there was no Arnold. There was no Arnold, so. It kind of was know. the key ingredient the first time around, yeah. right? Yeah. Colin Farrell's, you know, he's pretty cool. <laughs> How does he compare to Schwarzenegger? He's a better actor. I think many people can replace Arnold Schwarzenegger in a, a number of areas, but <laughs> so I don't I don't think that was the issue. Oh, okay. I thought I just thought Arnold's version was a lot better, and I felt like he had a better film presence than Colin Farrell. It was okay with him, but Arnold Schwarzenegger, no, nobody could top him. Agreed. I'm an Arnold fan as well. Did the movie have any redeeming qualities? 
Um, Kate Beckinsale. You get to see uh, Kate Beckinsale and Jessica Biel fight. That that was kind of enter <laughs> entertaining. Is it worth seeing in theaters, or is it a rental? What do you think? Well, if you could see it on a big screen like this, it's it's definitely worth it. I'd say rent this. It's a rental. It's a one-time watch. I paid to see it, but I but I, I pay to see far more movies than I probably should. Oh, okay. <laughs> what do you give the movie on a one to ten? Four. Ooh, a six? I'd give it a six out of ten. Six and a half. I would say uh, six, seven. I'd give it a solid seven. Probably, um, I don't know, five. So it looks like audiences think you're just as unlikely to take a trip to Mars as you are to see the new Total Recall. Overall, giving the film a 5.5. I'm Grace Randolph reporting from AMC Empire 25, and hope we'll go beyond the trailer for these other top movies.